a spell that will allow you to reach across space and time to talk to a U.S. senator. And then we travel to Britain, where we meet a couple who are on the run. Who's chasing them? They don't know. But they do know why they're being chased. Because of the screaming they heard underneath their house. Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. We're just going to go ahead and get started. I don't have any housekeeping. I do have to say though, if you guys are enjoying the show, please recommend me to your friends and family, and even people you don't like. Say, hey, I know we had some disagreements in the past, but listen to Dead Rabbit Radio. It's the best way to keep the show going. Let's build that listenership up, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to our first story though. Our first story starts off six days ago, depending on when you're listening to it. If you're listening to it today, six days ago, but if you're listening to it a year from now, 360, 371 days ago, six days ago on Reddit, a question was put on a Reddit forum. Is that what it's called? A subreddit. I guess subreddit is what it's called. Six days ago, there's a post on a subreddit. The question is, you start a new religion, what is it based on? This Reddit user says, if I started my own religion, it'd be based on forcing everybody to vote for Elizabeth Warren. And all things about glorifying Elizabeth Warren. I think I'm obsessed with her in real life. I'm like, okay, that's kind of kind of weird. But it's getting, you know, the p- climate's getting more political. The Democratic debates are coming up, 2020 election. I can see someone wanting to say, I want to start a religion that forces... Ev- this isn't political. I'm not going to get political, guys. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to break my streak. But this guy wants to start a religion to force everyone to vote for Elizabeth Warren. Four days ago, on another subreddit, another question appears. You're stuck on a 14-hour flight. Which celebrity do you want sitting next to you and why? What would you ask them? Same guy pops up. His answer? (laughs) Elizabeth Warren. And I'd ask her about Democrat stuff and how she will oust Trump. Now these responses just kind of disappear into the sea of Reddit responses. Like, they don't stand out in any way, shape, or form. The reason why I found those was because of what happened 17 hours ago. 17 hours ago, on on Reddit, I have a... I'm I, Again, I don't know the terms because I'm never really on Reddit that much. I have a couple of subscriptions. I've talked about it before. I'm mostly subscribed to the podcasting subreddits, but there's two in particular that I check all the time. Three, Unsolved Mysteries. I've gotten some stories out of there. High Strangeness. I've gotten a lot of leads out of there. And Three Kings. And Three Kings is a ritual subreddit. So it's where people post rituals like One Man Hide and Go Seek, Ace of Spades, all of these things that you can do to evoke demons that run around your apartment. Uh, One Man Hide and Go Seek, since I mentioned that, that's an old one. You take a teddy bear or a doll, and you cut a little hole in its back. And I'm giving you a... <laughs> don't try doing this. If you are going to do this, look it up online, because I'm probably giving you the wrong instructions. Don't blame me if a teddy bear murders you in your sleep. But you take a teddy bear, you cut off your fingernail clippings, not your <laughs> whole fingernail. Clip your fingernails, that's what I meant to say. Cut off some hair, put it in the bear or the doll, and put it in the bathtub. And then you go into a corner of your house and go... I'm it, and then you walk up and you touch the doll in your bathtub, and then you say, you're it, and then you go hide, and you have to stay hidden for like six hours, and you'll hear like little footsteps walking around, walking around the house looking for you, and you can't fall asleep, because he'll stab you in the eyes, that's like a specific rule, and you can't be found, or he'll stab you in the eyes. Now, I don't know how anyone knows this, apparently this is an old game from Japan, that, but... <clears throat> That aside, so on the Three Kings, which is a famous ritual, Three Kings, Elevator Game is on here as well. It's just things you can do. Basically, they're interactive creepypasta. They're campfire stories that you can play along with. Totally fake. Totally fake. Every so often, a real one might get snuck in there, but I think for the most part, they're totally phony. So that's just a quick overview of what like the rituals are on this site. Whether or not they're real, 
I don't know. I can tell you this one that we're about to say most likely isn't real. I think most likely this was made up by some guy who really, really likes Elizabeth Warren. And so the reason why this whole thing came to my attention was I'm scrolling through the, the Reddit. The, <laughs> I'm scrolling through Reddit, and I see in my subscriptions a ritual for the talk to all ritual. And that's all it says. And then there's a picture of Elizabeth Warren. I'm like, what? Like, it just, if they had a picture of a spooky ghost or like a dark tree, I would have just thought it was another stupid ritual someone made up. Never would have clicked on it. Unfortunately for this guy, and fortunately for us, this was an odd enough combination to see Elizabeth Warren pop up in a ritual page that I clicked on it. And now I present to you the talk to all ritual. It starts off, we have the photo of Elizabeth Warren. So basically, that image is burned into your head the rest of your time you're reading this ritual. And the first thing we see is it says, concerning the image, they want to get it right off the bat, why there's a picture of Elizabeth Warren here, which is very helpful, because that was very, very puzzling to me. Concerning the image, this is on his thread, concerning the image, the person in the image is Elizabeth Warren. If you were trying to contact Elizabeth Warren with this ritual, you could use the image. And I'm thinking, who else wants to contact Elizabeth Warren so bad that they're going to invoke the dark gods, they're going to create this ritual? It goes on to say that supposedly this is a classic ritual from Japan. And this guy just recently translated this ritual from Japanese. And this ritual can be used to communicate with the living, the dead, and even an imaginary person. So out of all of the humans that have ever existed, even including the fictional ones, this guy wants to talk to Elizabeth Warren. So, I don't even know if Elizabeth Warren's mom would want to talk to Elizabeth Warren over Benjamin Franklin or Gandhi or anything else. But anyways, this guy has found the... Luckily, this guy who's posted several times about how much he loves Elizabeth Warren has stumbled across the Japanese spell that will allow him to talk to Elizabeth Warren. What are the odds? What are the odds of this? Later on, someone asks him, why Elizabeth Warren? And he goes, oh... Well, it was just chance. I put 50 names in a hat, and I pulled out Elizabeth Warren. But looking at his Reddit history, we we absolutely know that's not true. We absolutely know that's not true. The guy wants to start a religion around her. Out of all the celebrities to talk to on a plane, he talks to Elizabeth Warren. So I don't believe the hat story at all. So considering that's most likely false, I think that shows that this whole thing is ridiculous. But I know you're thinking, Jason, I just just tell me how to talk to Elizabeth Warren. Okay, I'm getting to that. These are the things you will need to contact U.S. Senator and Democratic nominee, not Democratic person running to be the Democratic nominee. Don't pick up the phone and call her congressional office. Don't write her a letter like most normal people. Get these items. Get these items. A writing tool, pen or pencil. Two pieces of paper. Two pieces of paper. Now, he's very specific. He says one of these have to be 8 by 11. So... You have to have one normal size piece of paper and the other one can be like legal or whatever the lame stuff is. But he does say, this is very helpful to me. He goes, any material can be used as long as you can write on it with a pen. Yes, you can even use papyrus from Egypt. Thank you. I have so much of that stuff laying around and I've been wondering what am I going to use it for? Thank you for letting me know that I can use papyrus from ancient Egypt for this made up ritual. Next step, you also need an image of anyone you wish to contact. It can be anything. It can be an image on your phone. It can be a drawing. And he has a helpful example here. He goes, if I was trying to contact Elizabeth Warren (laughs) using this ritual, I'd load up this image on my phone. Next thing you need is a box. And it can be any size, but it has to be big enough to fit an 8x11 piece of paper in it. Um, And the fourth thing you need, patience. Like, I'm running out of patience when I was reading this guy's Reddit post. These are the steps that you actually will go through to contact anyone living or dead. If you want to contact a dead person, you have to talk to him between 12 a.m. to 59 a.m. If you want to talk to a living person, it's 3 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. You also need to turn off the light. So what you're going to do is, on the piece of paper, you are going to write the name of the person you want to talk to, and helpfully... The poster says, nicknames are okay. And this is a quote from his post. For example, since Donald, Tr- <laughs> since Donald Trump has referred to Elizabeth Warren as Pocahontas, you may write Pocahontas on a piece of paper. Just as an example. Very good. Just letting it know. Just an example. 
My question is, what happens if you just, what happens if you end up contacting Pocahontas? Like, again, you have to be specific. You just can't put nickname. If people call me big guy, you're contacting any big guy. Well, I guess it's a photo of me. But why would you have a photo of Elizabeth Warren? You write Pocahontas on it. So, I mean, again, he's just going to end up contacting an animated character or the actual Pocahontas, a 16-year-old girl who died of typhoid. Just write down Elizabeth Warren if that's who you want to talk to. I think he just wanted to keep typing her name. Next step is you say this. And again, I just absolutely love that he has to keep saying that I'm just using her as an example. But this is what he says you have to chant. You write down Pocahontas on a piece of paper, and then you go, quote, I wish to speak, and I shall hear the voice of Elizabeth Warren. And you have to say that four times. And then you say, I'm sure that I wish to contact this person. You say, I want to hear a voice, or I want a reply in writing. After that, you turn away from the box. So you have the photo of Elizabeth Warren, you wrote Pocahontas on it, you put it in a box, you said, I wish to speak, and I shall hear the voice of Elizabeth Warren. And I don't have cable, so I can't watch CNN, and I don't have YouTube, I can't hear her voice that way, or a phone to call up her office. I'm using this ritual. You say all that stuff. Four times, you turn around from the box. You don't look at the box for 20 seconds. You look back at the box. Now, he says, if you turn around and the piece of paper is missing, the ritual has failed. And you can't go back into that room for two days. Don't even dare. He said his Japanese ancestors never told anyone what happened if you went back in there within two days because it was so horrible. So don't do it. He gives a helpful hint that you should do it outside because of this. So that way you don't you don't invalidate like one-fifth of your house by doing this in a room you can't go to. Just do it outside. So now you have evoked like a glitchy ring level of Elizabeth Warren like flickering in the woods. I'm here to talk to you. Talk to you. Don't do that in public, dude. First off, actually, that'd be kind of funny to see someone doing this in public saying, I want to hear Elizabeth Warren. But if you're if there's a chance that the spell goes wrong, don't do it where I jog. And I don't jog. Don't do it where I walk through. And if it if the paper disappears, if you eliminate matter from the universe and it magically vanishes, you've failed at the spell. That sounds to me like the most successful spell possible. You can destroy evidence, you can destroy documents, but that's a failure to this. You, you could take like all of the files the FBI wants and just write Pocahontas on them, throw them in a box, turn around, turn back, the files are gone. This, this guy should work for any company that's under investigation. But he does say this. If you turn around and when you come back, there's green marks on the paper. The spell is a success. You didn't disintegrate matter. You didn't destroy something that exists, which is completely impossible by all laws of physics. There's just green marks on it. And that means you did the job right. If you said, I want to get a letter, what you do is you check your mailbox. And within three days, you will get a letter from Elizabeth Warren. He helpfully says if you don't have a mailbox, who doesn't have a mailbox? But he helpfully says if you don't have a mailbox, just put the box in a safe spot and look in the box every three days and eventually a letter will appear from Elizabeth Warren. In the box. Magically in the box. Now, again, I don't know. That seems like that would be more magical than just getting a circular from her, just getting an average letter. I would much rather just try to have something magically appear in the box from a U.S. senator. But I have a mailbox, just like 99% of all other people in the civilized world. So that wouldn't work for me. I would have to go and destroy my mailbox. I'd have to destroy every mailboxes, etc. in town before I can magically make a letter appear. However, you're saying, Jason, I don't want the letter, man. I want to talk to Elizabeth Warren. I want to hear her voice. Very helpful. After the spell, go to sleep, take a nap. And in your dream, Elizabeth Warren will show up and talk to you. And to add to the creepy factor of all this stuff, he says people don't remember their dreams very often, which is true. Most people don't remember their dreams. So you should do this ritual over and over and over again so you keep dreaming about Elizabeth Warren. So you'll remember her in your head. To me, it almost feels like he's creating a tulpa of Elizabeth Warren. If you did this ritual over and over and over again, and then kept going to sleep and trying to dream of Elizabeth Warren, of a U.S. senator. It's just, you're basically creating a tulpa at that point. Now, 
there's some big questions here. I mean, it's all nonsense. None of this is true. If you want to do this, I don't think there's any blowback for it. I would much rather do this than play with the Ouija board. Because this is 100% made up. But I'm not worried about not being able to go in my bedroom. Because Elizabeth Warren may be in my closet. I'm not worried about that at all. The big thing is, in the original, he said, you can talk to anyone living, dead, or imaginary. And a couple of the responses to this was, where's the imaginary thing? How do I talk to an imaginary? Which is way more, I'd much rather talk to Darth Vader than Elizabeth Warren. I'd much rather talk to Spider-Man than Elizabeth Warren. There's a whole universe of people out there that I'd rather talk to rather than Elizabeth Warren. Nothing against Elizabeth Warren. I really don't know much about her. But she's one of a hundred senators. That's it. If you had your choice between talking to any mythological or imaginary figure or anyone living or dead versus someone that I could literally write a letter to today and probably get a response from in about two weeks, I'd much rather talk to Unicron or anybody. So people are like, where's the imaginary person spelled? That's the one I want. I don't care about Elizabeth Warren. And he's like, when my religion comes, you will care about it. No, he says, I haven't translated that part yet from the original Japanese. I.e., I haven't made that part up yet. We did get one person try the ritual, though. I can't. Ju- I can just imagine what this guy's thinking reading these responses. One guy did do the ritual, and this was his response. It was very scary. I think I didn't do the ritual right. Because there are like 15 Elizabeth Warrens outside my house right now. They keep saying America is a democracy. And no matter how much I correct them that it is a constitutional republic, they just won't go away and keep multiplying. I don't know what else to do. Please help. I'm crying and shaking right now. You can go to the Reddit thread itself and kind of see how he's responded to other people. But he doesn't really seem... I thought he was trolling. I wasn't going to cover this at all because I thought it was a troll. But then when I saw his Reddit history where he was talking about Elizabeth Warren, it could still be a troll. It could be in a stat like he was trying to trick someone like me. But at first I thought there's no one in the world who would come up with a ritual to talk to Elizabeth Warren at all. Out of all the stuff I covered, that seemed to be one of the most ludicrous statements. And apparently this is true. So I'm wondering how he's responding to this idea of 15 Elizabeth Warrens walking around this guy's front yard. He might be a little jealous. And you're, okay, so you're going, Jason, great. What's the point of all this? Well, first off, I want to say, I'm not, let's not troll, I'm not asking anyone to troll him or make fun of him or anything like that. I'm not making fun of the guy in particular, I'm making fun of the ritual, and I, I'm not trying to say, hey, let's go make fun of this guy, don't go on Reddit and harass him or anything like that. What, the reason why I wanted to cover this is because I think this is indicative of magic systems in general. I think, unless you are looking at a spell that is thousands upon thousands of years old. I don't believe it. I don't believe someone can sit around and make up a spell today that works. I don't think it, I don't think it works that way. I, I, I don't believe that someone can sit down and go, I'm going to create a ritual and that's going to help warp reality. I'm going to look in the mirror. I'm going to play the mirror game. I'm going to do the Three Kings ritual. I'm going to do all this stuff. It will allow me to bend... The multiverse to my will. I don't believe that at all. But a growing number of people do. I know I've talked a lot about Wiccans in the past, and I'm not going to, you know, poop all over Wiccans again. But modern day Wiccans really originated in the 1960s. When we, when they talk about witches in medieval times, completely different from the witches of today. They, they're almost unrecognizable. And so if I was back in the 1600s, I wouldn't be talking crap about witches or witchcraft. I wouldn't be like, oh, you guys are so phony. Because I'd get turned into a toad or I would just get beat to death by a bunch of women with brooms. But today it's like, uh, I mean, you're basically using magic that's quote unquote magic that's 60 years old tops. So I don't believe any of that, but a growing number of people do. And I think when this guy created this ritual, and yes, I do think he made it up, when he created this ritual... I think he thinks that it works. And I find that so bizarre that I can make something up out of the blue and then assume that it will actually work. The chances of this guy casting the spell and dreaming about Elizabeth Warren is incredibly high. The chances of me casting the spell and dreaming about (laughs) Elizabeth Warren is incredibly low. I don't have that, I don't have such a desire to talk to Elizabeth Warren. But if I did this ritual five days in a row, 
And I was thinking about hanging out with Britney Spears, and I dream about Britney Spears. I'm going to think it's Tuesday night. I always dream about Britney Spears on Tuesday nights. Like, I'm not going to attach any magical connection to it. But we live in an age where people believe that stuff they made up is real. And that's an odd way to live. It's an odd way to live. Someone else can make something up and I could be fooled into believing it. But if I make it up and believe it's real, that's a whole other ballgame. And speaking of that, that was a bit longer than I thought it was going to go on. But speaking of living in a delusion, let's take a look at the interesting story of a couple in Britain. This was actually a recommendation from Alexandra on Facebook. So thank you, Alexandra. Keep sending your recommendations in. I know I haven't been covering them a lot lately, but they do tend to take a little more research than the other stories I cover. So let's go to England. Jolly old England. Home of meat pies and people getting their heads chopped off. That was French Revolution. Meat pies and getting crossbows through the heart. Like King Richard. So we're in Britain. We're having a cup of tea. We're sitting at home. We're wearing our bathrobes. We don't got anything on underneath it. It is a Wednesday morning. We just got done dreaming about Britney Spears. We walked backstage of her Vegas show. And she's like, hey, Jason, what's going on? As she slowly takes her top off. And, you know, you think you're looking at Britney Spears. But anyways, you shake out the dream. You're like, I can't. Back in reality, Jason. Back in reality. Drinking your cup of tea. You see a flyer kind of like hanging on the inside of your door. And you're like, that's weird. I don't remember putting any flyers in my door. So you get up and you look at the flyer. And this is what this flyer says. Please help. You're like, "Uh uh-oh. I better keep reading before I actually help. Top says, please help. In August 2018, we discovered what we think is an illicit drug manufacturing factory running somewhere underneath our house. Women and children can be heard screaming. We reported it to the police who first ignored us and then did not bother to listen to the secret audio recordings we made. The recordings were made secretly in a 1.5 meter shaft tunneled into the sidewall of our basement. On the recordings you can hear women screaming, two foreign men talking, and an automated machine running and flushing. When it flushes, it emits a strong gas. And then it goes on to say more info like they hear the sound of motorbikes and police sirens inside this tunnel. The tunnel itself is at 1.5 meters. So apparently, their story is this. Back in August of 2018, there was this couple. Their names were Alan and Christine Tate. And they're living in their house. And all of a sudden, it's weird because they, they their information seems to be a little bit spotty. But it might just be them. But anyways, from what I could gather, they're sitting in their house. And they smell an overwhelmingly scent of toxic gas. Like, not so much that they were dying, but it was so noxious. That's the word I was looking for. They leave their house. They couldn't figure out the source of it. And from what I can gather at one point, they popped a hole in their wall to see if that's where the smell... Because they said, we don't use gas. We don't have natural gas. They punched a hole in the wall to see if that's where the smell was coming. And that hole either led into their basement to tunnels underneath their house or allowed them to hear in the basement of a commercial building next door to their house. Again, I'm very, very iffy on this. They have their own weekly radio show and they have a bunch of podcast episodes, but the audio quality isn't that good. So I had a really hard time kind of piecing the story together. And so they said they're smelling this gas. So then they start hearing sounds through the tunnel, like through the little shaft in their wall. They hear the sounds of women and children screaming. They hear the sounds of police siren. And they're saying... About two miles away, there's an old World War II bunker. And we believe there's a tunnel leading from that bunker underneath our house to the property next door. And you can hear uh, an engine running, and we think that's what's making the gas fill our house. Now, they go to the authorities, and they go, our house is filling up with this horrible, horrible smelling gas. And the authorities, their first question is, did you eat Taco Bell? And they're like, no, we didn't. That was our first suspicion, too. But we haven't eaten Taco Bell in a while. And the police are like, okay, this might this might actually be something then. So don't go back to your house. Don't go back to your house. And they're like, well, we kind of have to. But so they do end up like sneaking back onto their property. And that's when they hear the noises and they leave the tape recorder out. And every so often they'd come back and they'd pick the tape recorder back up and they'd listen to it. And each tape had about five hours of audio on it. 
They'd listen back to the tape. They'd hear screaming. They'd go to the police and say, listen, we have these cassette tapes that have the sounds of these people screaming. We think there's a tunnel underneath our house. We think you need to do something. And the police say, no, we're not going to do it. We already checked the Taco Bell angle. We don't know what else to do. And the guys and, and Alan and Christine are like, well, can you listen to the tapes? I mean, maybe if you listen to the tapes, you can like tell us that's not what it is or that we're crazy or something like that. And according to the tapes, the police refused to listen to the cassettes. They didn't want to listen to the tapes at all. And so finally, Alan was like, listen, can you at least at least go to the place that's next to us? And we think they're a drug manufacturing. We think the smell is a noxious gas that's coming out of the equipment for making drugs. I don't know how they make that leap of logic. But anyways, Alan and Christine say, we think the place next to us is a drug manufacturing lab. And maybe they're manufacturing underground and they're bringing them up into the place. But why don't you go check out that place next to us? Now, an interesting thing happens. The police say, we will check out the place next to you. We'll do that. They then call, this is all according to the Tates. The police then call up the commercial place and say, we want to come and check out your place of business. And the place of business says, cheerio, mate, you can totally do that, but not right now. Give us three weeks. And the police go, okay. And so after three weeks, the police go to the place And it's empty. The police are like, well, that's what we thought. There's no drugs here. And Alan and Christine are like, you waited three, you told him you were coming, you waited three weeks. So, what did you think was going to happen? At this point, Alan and Christine, they originally made their money buying businesses and then liquidating them. They live in a van now. And they are so certain that there is nefarious things going on underneath that house. They drive around England passing out these flyers and just putting them in people's doors, putting them on their windshield wipers. And the the flyers direct people to their SoundCloud page where you can hear samples of these audio tracks and to their change.org petition to try to get the local police to... And I don't think I ever said where this was at. I think I just said it was in Britain. And to try to get the local police in their area, it was some British place. So, you know, I have a hard time with the geography over there. I know that's not helpful, but it's like in southwest England. Anyways, Gloucestershire. Glou, 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 Gloucestershire. So, anyways, that's where it took place. So, they're trying to get the local police. As far as the last article I saw on this, they have 106 signatures on their uh, change.org petition. But I know your big question is, Jason, did you listen to the audio recordings? Now, I didn't listen to the five-hour audio recordings because I have stuff to do. I watched Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles instead. That movie's actually really good. It was actually funny, shockingly funny. Check it out. But instead of instead of doing research for the show, I watched that movie. But I did watch the... I did listen to the smaller clips. I definitely heard the sound of a motorbike. Now, that could have been from outside. You know my microphone picks up cars driving down the street. But there are... There's like audio files labeled woman screaming. And you click on it and there's a woman going, come on, Gary. No, don't. It's not an EVP. It does sound like a woman's actually saying that. It doesn't sound like a trick of the mind or anything like that. But that's fairly inconclusive. And I will say this. It's like an EVP where, you know, you kind of have to like strain your ear to hear it. But imagine an EVP where you're trying to figure out what's going on, and then the sound of a Harley just right next to your ear. So use caution when listening to these, because they get really, really loud out of the blue. So here's the question. This is really what I want to look at. Going off the other story, the Elizabeth Warren delusion thing. Believing something so much you know that you made it up, yet it becomes true. Is that at play here? Are these people just driving around in their van, Passing these out because they believe this thing. When I first read it, I thought the gas, the gas made them hallucinate the noises, which is possible. It's not Scarecrow's fear toxin, which he used against Leonardo in Batman versus the Ninja Turtles. He thought all of his brothers were dead. It was quite tragic. But it's not, it would wear off. And Scarecrow's fear toxin also doesn't affect audio recording. So the first off, I thought maybe they just got a lot of the gas and they were hallucinating it. It's possible that's what started this and then the audio recordings are just picking up something else. Here's the thing. I think there might be something to this story. Now, it doesn't... There may be a... This is the thing. 
that, again, we see a lot in these type of stories. There may be a tunnel leading from World War II bunker underneath their property over to the next building. There may be people in that tunnel talking and screaming and riding their motorcycles around. But to take that leap of logic to drug trafficking is it can't just be there's some hobos <laughs> living under your house. It can't just be there's some kid with his motorbike underneath there riding around and turning on a machine and pumping smoke everywhere. It has to be a conspir- a criminal conspiracy. The police are involved in everything like this. And it's you and your wife against the world. I do honestly believe there probably is a tunnel under their house. And there probably are people in that tunnel. That actually sounds quite plausible. But to then say, ergo, they must be manufacturing drugs and the police are covering it up. And they're on, they never spend more than one night in one location. They live in their van now. They drive around England, not just town. They never spend more than one night in any one city. They've changed their entire way of life because of this. Now, if you got ran out of your house because of noxious gas, because some teenagers were goofing off in a tunnel, or a bunch of hobos were living down there, and every so often a woman was like, Gary, stop doing that. Give me the crack pipe. That's not compelling. That's not something that gives you a purpose in life. These people before, they had a successful business, buying and selling stuff. Which is kind of every business, but you know, they were doing well. But then all of a sudden, they went from being a couple living in a house to champions fighting for truth, justice, and the Britain way. They became lone warriors against a faceless bureaucracy and a corrupt organization. The tunnel is most likely true. But the story coming from the tunnel I believe, has been embellished. They may believe it's true, just like the Elizabeth Warren guy may believe it's true. It's not in the tunnel. He doesn't believe in the tunnel, unless Elizabeth Warren is down there. But believing that fictional story has given their lives purpose. Believing the myth has made them mythical heroes. There's a chance they're right. There's a chance they're right. But it's most likely something so mundane that wouldn't force people to become traveling truth seekers. Sometimes we just have to admit to ourselves, the world can be mundane. And no matter how many magical rituals you make up, or how many faceless organizations that are after you, at the end of the day, you are just an ordinary person living in an ordinary world. It may not be the most exciting Fate, it may not be the greatest experience, but sometimes the truth is just blah. Just got to eat your oatmeal, and maybe you'll find a real adventure down the road. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at deadrabbitradio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys.